The fight to Barcelona begins today. Trent Dimas comes to Columbus to erase the image of last year's crash, which so vividly remains in all our minds. The pressure to prove to himself and to the world what he's truly made of. John Roethlisberger tried and failed to handle the pressure last year at the championships. This year, he's back to regain the national title he had lost. Chris Waller, the reigning national champion, also here in defense of his throne. With power and force, Scott Keswick, the highest ranked American gymnast, tries for his first national title. 1988 Olympian Lance Ringnald returns to the spotlight for the first time since his injury at Worlds. He too has something to prove. Coming out from the shadows, an old face revisits a familiar setting. On the last leg of his comeback run, 36-year-old Kurt Thomas joins the elite men, knowing there's no room for second chances. The time is now. The place is here. The burning desire and quest toward Barcelona is next. Today, we bring you the final of the men's all-around competition. Hello again, everybody. I'm John Tashin with Barcelona, the Olympic Games just around the corner. Today, you're going to get a chance to see many of the faces who will be competing for the United States in Barcelona in the Games. A man who did that back in 1984, of course, and who came away with gold is our expert, Tim Daggett. And Tim, the team we see here today is really a shadow of that 84 team. Well, John, really, realistically, I do not think that this U.S. team can challenge the former Soviet Union for the gold medal. Frankly, I don't know if anybody can. That team is just so deep, so strong. However, the U.S. men do have an outside shot with possibly the bronze medal in the team competition. On the individual side, that's a different story. The U.S. team has some very strong competitors, some that could even challenge on, for say, high bar, maybe even a gold medal at those Olympic Games. Now, the way this works is the top 18 finishers here at the Nationals advance to compete in the Olympic trials, so that puts this event in perspective. It certainly does. All of these athletes here, they are thinking top six, not only here at the championships, but also at the final trials. You put those two competitions together, you have the U.S. Olympic team. Those are the kids that are on the plane going over to Barcelona. Those are Olympians. The pressure here is tremendous, however. And there are some interesting personalities out on the gym floor among the men. And with more on that, let's go down to Beth Ruyak. Thanks, John. You can take your pick of words to describe the men's competition for those top six spots. It's fierce, it's intense, and it's unpredictable because you can't name six definite names. But there is one name that you will know, a 1976 Olympian who comes here as an underdog. He is Kurt Thomas, and he's hoping today just to make the number 18 cutoff and go on to trials. We'll follow him and see if he can do it. Also today, two careers on the line, Lance Ringald and Trent Demas, two of America's brightest hopes, both world-class athletes. Just six months ago, both of them were virtually written off because of serious injuries related to physical and mental intensity and overload. So they have a lot to prove today, and we'll follow them and see if they can do it. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, Lance and Trent train together and share the challenge of a comeback. They're together about as much as two guys can be. It happened all at once for Trent, a crash on the vault and a series of crashes in his personal life. He seriously thought about quitting gymnastics. And then there's Lance. He had torn his shoulder muscle. Mending his muscle and his psyche meant a lot of changes, especially in his perspective. The, the injury, even looking back now, was such a positive thing for me. You know, I think that I, I wasn't really liking gymnastics a whole lot at the World Championships in 91 before the injury. It's because I'd been doing it for so long. I was tired. My body hurt. I was kind of confused in why am I doing gymnastics. I got off track a little bit. And the attitude I'm taking now is hit or miss, I, I can do it, I'm capable again. And that's the good feeling. That that's what the sport's all about. That's when I was 10 years old. That's, that's what I started. I started because it was fun. And got, you know, off track, went up and down throughout my career. And the injury knocked me back on my butt, said, go back, you know, look at the basics. And that's what I did. It's ironic, last year these two were rivals. They fought and they were jealous of each other. 
This year, they're a team motivating each other, proud for each other. Well, when Trent came in there, I, I had someone to compare to. You know, his strong events, I was like, I need to work harder here. You know, and, and that kind of camaraderie and pushing the athlete a little further, that's what you need in sport. And that's what I get from Trent. Trent's accident is a snapshot in so many people's memories. At last year's Nationals, when it happened, he says he was competing for all the wrong reasons. Going to the competition, it was like, uh, it, was, it was kind of between both Lance and I. We were both very burnt out. We had competed a lot of competitions in the past year. We were very, very tired. And uh, it was just like, I was in it for the money. You know, I wanted to get it over with. I wanted to be able to subsidize myself for the next six months. And um, it was just like, I don't want to compete, but I have to because I want to survive. So here it is, one year ago. And somehow, Trent Dima summoned the courage to try it again. That character means a lot to me. You know, I wanted to show people that, no, I'm not a quitter. You know, I never have been, and I won't be. And so I thought, you know, I just got to do it again, because if I, if I wouldn't have done it then, I probably wouldn't be doing that vault today. I know now that could never happen again because it's just I've trained it too hard I mean my mental frame now is a lot different than it was last year I know what I have to do I know what I've done I've trained it very hard there's nothing that can stand in my way right now nothing so you loaded into your brain what would you be thinking here is Trent Demas as he prepared for his vault here at the national championships All the thoughts, all the memories of past experiences, the horrors of last year. He's got to deal with them. And you heard him say it when he hit the ground. He thought he was paralyzed. The critical thing when you're dealing with something like this vault is you must be precise, exact. And he dealt with it well. And so that vault was in the third rotation. Demas getting by not only a physical, but a mental hurdle. <laughs> and still able to clown around for the camera. Let's take a moment and show you the standings after three rotations of six that the men compete in. Scott Keswick up top. There's Demas and Lance Ringnall down there. Sixth and eighth. Kurt Thomas in 16th place. And John, what we really need to do is focus in on these six, seven, and eight spots. Those are the critical ones. Those are the guys fighting to make that team. Trent Demas getting set for parallel bars. And remember, he is in a very difficult position right now. He has no room to spare at all. Every exercise today has to be right on. Demas is the son of an ex-gymnast and a Golden Gloves boxer. And it's been said this guy is either right on or off really no middle ground for Demas so far he is right on 100 percent he really has a nice long line on the parallel bars this is an event that he can really show off but as with all gymnastics you gotta stick the landing oh, oh. big steps back that is not what Trent Demas needs at this point in time. We'll see soon here what the judges have to say about that performance. The compulsory exercises count 60%. These optionals count 40% of the total score. And score coming up for Demas, a 9-4, so he is digging himself a pretty deep hole here in the fourth rotation. Coming up, Kurt Thomas on the horse. He stands 16th. John Tesh along with Tim Daggett and Beth Ruyak waiting along with everybody else here in St. John Arena, Columbus, Ohio, to see if this man, a caged animal right now, pacing back and forth, can make a comeback in the world of gymnastics. 
Almost two decades ago, Kurt Thomas was the core and spark of American gymnastics. Today, he faces a skeptical public as his resurging comeback nears its end. Part of the problem was not that people were skeptical, because I don't blame them. I mean, I haven't done anything. I still haven't done anything in this comeback to make anybody believe that Kurt Thomas can make it. Thomas comes to Columbus with much to prove and with overwhelming desire to fill the only void in his career, winning an Olympic medal. The chance is now, the place is here. I know it's got to happen now, and I've put two and a half years into this now, and this is the time. It has to happen now, and I think that kind of pressure is good for me. It's been a long road back in his drive for gold. Only time will tell what's in store for this 36-year-old. Who knows? If not this time, maybe next. Believe it or not, I, I may try for 96. As long as I can feel competitive, I may stick around. You know, maybe 50, 60, I'll be out there, and my coach will hold my cane, and I'll jump up on the horse and do a couple flares and jump down. You got to love a guy with a sense of humor. Well, you know, you really got to give this guy credit. It's been a long, hard road. He's had a number of injuries. He didn't have too many in his earlier career, and many others would have abandoned the comeback long ago. Pommel horse, of course, his trademark. The Thomas Flair, remember? We certainly do. We haven't seen it yet. The thing that Kurt has done over the past six months is improve some of his difficulty. There's the first glimpse of it right there, the Thomas Flair, a little bit labored to the handstand, but overall a good routine. Kurt Thomas attempting to become the oldest gymnast to make the U.S. team in the past five decades. Let's take a look at some of his one pommel work right there. And this is a skill that wasn't even really around when Kurt was competing back in 1976 or so. Going up to the handstand and back down into scissors. Score from the judges, 9.65 for Thomas. Nearly respectable, but not a terrific score. Well, certainly it'll keep him definitely in the place he's in. Maybe it could even move him up just a little bit, John. Now, here's a good look at Chris Waller, our defending champion, who is in fifth place. He's getting set for his performance on the high bar. This is a great event for Chris Waller. A lot of pressure in this competition, though. John Roethlisberger last year did not deal well at all with being the defending champion. Watch this right here. Full spin right into another one, all on one arm. He'll do three releases. First one right here. Very nicely done. He's got two more to do, though. These are in sequence. Beautiful. Right now at this point, he is thinking dismount. Gotta land it. It's a tough one. Two twists, two flips. Yeah! Ooh. And a great landing. This from a gentleman who has undergone open heart surgery. As a high school sophomore, surgeons replaced a defective aorta with a Teflon aorta. Chris getting encouraging words from the assistant coach at UCLA, Yefim Furman. Let's watch it. These release skills right here. Beautiful Tkachev. And he'll follow it right into a flyway with a half turn. He just grabs that bar. And he's right on. Score for Waller a 9-8, and that could very well move him up. There they are, the rings, and they wait for this man, John Roethlisberger. That's his dad, Fred Roethlisberger, his coach. John is in second place as he begins his fourth rotation. And remember last year, John tried to defend his national title and did not deal with the pressure well at all. And that's being kind. There was foot stomping, hand slamming, tears, arguing between dad slash coach and son slash athlete. And that's a good point. You know, I discussed this with John, and he says his relationship with his father and coach has changed a little bit since then. He says his dad believes in him a little bit more and lets him make a few more of the decisions on his own. And so far, it is certainly paying off. This is a great ring routine so far. Just the big dismount. 
Two twists, two flips. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> Boy. There's a strength move right there. <laughs> oh, John, was that pretty? Oh, they got it. That was good enough for me, John. <laughs> Oh, boy. Let's get the psychiatrist out on this one. Was that good enough for you, Fred? That was good enough for me, John. I'm, li I'm leaving the rest of that alone. Go ahead. It's all smiles this year. And this dismount right here, certainly the major reason why. One of the most difficult being done in the world today. He'll do two flips, two twists, try to spot the ground. And look at this. This is a fighter right there. Fights for every single tenth. says it right there. 9-7. Ooh, that seems a little low for that. That's a pretty good routine. I don't know exactly where they deducted. You know, it's up to the judge whether they want to take a deduction for all that arm swinging or not. Our leader right now, after three rotations, is Scott Keswick from Las Vegas, Nevada. And Scott actually just narrowly missed winning a medal at the World Championships on this event, the high bar. He finished second the American Cup, and his 10 on rings places him as the only active U.S. male gymnast to score a perfect mark in international competition. Watch his first set of releases right here. Right into a beautiful flyaway half. Very nicely done. Oh, he's Change. in trouble. Again. Oh, boy. You hear his coach, Yafim, telling him to do the skill again. He has to do that. Oh, he's in. Oh! Ow. Oh boy, that hurts. He hit that okay, bar. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, John, he has 30 seconds to remount the high bar. If he can. If he cannot mount the high bar, then he is in serious trouble. Jam, pirouette, starter pirouette, and triple. And Yafim telling him he has to redo the skill again. And that's critical because that part that he's already attempted twice and fallen on the second time is a required element on the high bar. He must perform that. One more time right here. Deals with it well. Now, John, after that fall, he has got to do one of the most difficult dismounts in the world, a triple back somersault right here. Three flips, one, two, three. Oh, and just a little bit short on the landing end. You See the grimace on the face there. I'm giving him a 10 for courage, though. If that's me, I'm not getting back up on that bar after that. But you have to remember these athletes have trained their whole lives for this moment. And he is still in a great deal of pain. He was our leader before this event. That will take him right out of that first place spot. Let's see if we can see what goes wrong. He just shoots his body out a Ow. little bit early and, oh, tries to make a compensation. But on that particular skill, it is a compensation you cannot make. He tries to pull his body over the bar. His shoulders do what we call in-locate, and he just slams down on top of that bar, and that is hard steel. A 9.0 for Scott, but more importantly, is he okay? He's in the training room now. Get him checked out okay, and see what's, what the story is here. We're dealing, of course, not only with the physical problem, but a devastating mental injury right there as well. Here's a man who can relate to that. Lance Ringnald, who hurt himself severely in the 1991 World Championships. That's right. Actually had to drop out of the competition, was on the still rings, and felt something go. Said it sounded like Velcro tearing. Well, something tore. It wasn't Velcro. It was his pectoralis major tendon. He had to have surgery on that to reattach it as John Roethlisberger, who is now in the lead after that mishap from Scott Keswick, looks on. See that graph for sixth place? That's important. The top 18 gymnasts at the national championships will go on to the Olympic trials, but only the top six out of the trials will represent the United States in Barcelona. And that is a position that this young man certainly wants to be in. Every routine you do after a major injury like Lance has been through, there's always just a little bit of a thought, a thread in the back of your mind. Is everything going to be okay? Double pike dismount and a small hop on the landing. A little bit of a conservative routine for Lance. He's had to change his difficulty a little bit. 
be a little bit more conservative throughout the exercise, but he does meet all the requirements. Let's take a look at one of his most difficult rated skills. This is called a peach straddle cut catch. A little bit labored there. You notice that the legs scrape on the bars, but that's a D rated skill. We'll look at that one more time. You notice the legs touch the bar. That is a deduction on the parallel bars. 945 for Lance. A lot of low scores on the P bars. Roethlisberger is sitting pretty. Don't know what he's listening to, but it's working for him. There's the man who was our leader until he injured himself. He looks like he's okay now. He's able to stretch it out at least. Scott Keswick. Well, he's probably okay, but it is certainly going to be very painful. And his next event is floor exercise. And he has a couple of skills in that routine that are really going to hurt that injury. Here's a look at the standings after four rotations of six. John Roethlisberger jumps up there in first place over Keswick. Tim Ryan stands in third place. And Ryan now getting ready for his ring routine. This is one of Tim's better events. He's very strong physically. And one of the requirements on rings is that you do strength parts. And he will show us quite a few variations. He also has one of the most daring dismount sequences that I've ever seen. His first strength move, that's called a plange, and he'll press right up to the handstand. He'll power down again into a Maltese cross. And one more time, just to show the judges that this stuff is easy for him. A little bit shaky in the handstand, but watch this. He'll do two in a row. Look at this. Right into a double laid out somersault. And a little bit short on that landing. But that is some tough stuff. Tim Ryan standing in third place, entering that routine. Real battle there from one, two, and three. An injury on the high bar from Scott Keswick. Roethlisberger turns in a terrific routine, jumps into first, and now this. Well, you know, many people counted Tim Ryan totally out. He had a serious wrist injury, the type that end careers, and everybody wrote this kid off. He was the 1989 U.S. champion. They didn't even want to accept a petition for him to compete in the Nationals last year. 9-7 for Ryan, so that will probably keep him in third place at this moment. Roethlisberger is getting set for the vault. And there you see the graphic, our current leader. One vault for the men. Remember, the women get two vaults, and they're allowed to take the best of the two. The men get one chance. And As John has upgraded his difficulty here on the vault. He'll do a vault called the Double Twisting Sukahara, named after a famous Japanese gymnast. Needs a tremendous amount of push off the horse to get all of this done in one piece of air. Great push and a good landing. Boy, that is very much improved. Nice, nice landing. Nice landing, John. You never... Last year heard a lot of that from, from John's dad and coach. No, just a little bit different. Excellent push, two twists, and just the smallest of hops on that landing. That's one of the more difficult vaults being done today. From this view right here, you'll see that his body leaves the horse, actually flips about one and a half times around with two twists. So John Roethlisberger, 1990 national champion, appears to be on a roll. 9.75 for his vault. Remember you were talking about the pressure that was going to be put on Scott Keswick after that fall on the high bar? Well, here it is. Floor exercise. And this has not been a great event for Scott Keswick. He was doing very well at the American Cup. Had a good routine going. His last pass, major problem, put both of his hands down on the floor. But he's in some pain right now, and he's got to generate a tremendous amount of power right here. Well, he dealt with that well. Let's see how this goes, though. Watch, he's got to roll out of this skill. Oh, gosh. 
Scott actually learned gymnastics in Tehran, Iran, when he was a youngster. His dad was stationed in the Middle East of the Air Force. You can see a lot of grimacing going on, especially when Scott had to roll out of that skill and then dropping down into the split. You know, a lot of muscles and tendons attach, unfortunately, right where Scott crashed down onto the bar. And he's got to land right on them one more time again, right here. But this is one tough gymnast. A couple years ago, I don't know if Scott Keswick could have dealt with this mentally. Physically, yeah, but mentally, I don't know. Last tumbling pass. Great dismount, boy. He dealt with that very, very well. And he dealt with a lot of things, Tim. The pressure and the pain. And I spoke with Scott before this competition, and he said, I am going to win this national championship. He obviously knew halfway through that high bar routine that that dream was not going to come true, but he's got to get through all of his exercises. Watch this double laid out somersault. Very nicely done. Sigh of relief on his face right there. But right now, Keswick playing from second place behind Roethlisberger, and that score of 9-7 should keep him right there. As you take a look at Trent Demas preparing himself for the high bar routine that's ahead of him. We'll be back with more gymnastics after this word from your local station. Welcome back to Columbus, Ohio, home of the Buckeyes. We're on the campus of Ohio State University. We're here for the final of the men's all-around competition in the National Gymnastics Championships. And I'm John Tesh, along with Tim Daggett and Beth Bruyak. You're looking at Lance Ringnald as he readies himself for the high bar routine. An apparatus that's already claimed an in injury. One of these athletes, Scott Keswick, who had a problem, hit his back. Lance currently in seventh place, but this is an event where he can shine. Gold medalist at the 1990 Goodwill Games on this event. Watch this release skill. Kovacs over the bar. He's got it. He'll do two more. Watch this. Right on target. You know, I've really never seen anybody that was quite so natural on an event. He does a very difficult dismount. Double twisting, double laid out somersault. Oh. Boy, this is so good to see Lance doing this, having a competition like this. Right, Hot routine. You're back. Good job. You hear his coach Ed Burke say, you're back. Well, it is so important for the US team. They need this guy on the team. He's so experienced. He does skills like this, skills that can win gold medals in major competitions. Right. I'm sorry, that is just unbelievable. Look at the risk. It's incredible how these athletes have to push the envelope in this sport. Always doing one more release skill, always adding one more twist. Let's see what it does from the judges. 9.8, what do you gotta do to get a 10 in this event? <laughs> Well, you got to do the hard skills like Lance just did, but he had some form breaks throughout the routine, and he really didn't yeah, nail that like dismount that. cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, tap is important to me, you know? It's good. All right, here we go. One more to go. Back in gymnastics. Feels good. Uh, Lance doesn't need a cheering section. He carries his in his own body. Trent Demas up next on High Bar. We showed you that picture earlier of his disaster last year on the vault where he crashed on his head. After that, he lost his funding when he fell in the rankings. He and his fiance broke up. His life was a mess by his own admission. And he says he lost his will to compete in the sport of gymnastics. But Trent is the kind of guy that the U.S. needs on their team. The international judges know him. He has a reputation around the world. And we'll see why in just one minute here As Lance, watch this. He does a Kovacs also. Oh my, that is so high, so spectacular. He'll do two more releases as well. Toes, toes, toes. Hear the coach saying toes, toes. Make sure you kick your feet. Oh, there's a small error right there. Should have shot right to the handstand immediately. It's coach giving him just some 
Quick coaching hints. Triple back somersault. Yeah. Oh, he stuck that. Yes. Woo. You did it, yeah. Demas. <laughs> It's the Horizontal yes. Bar Men's Club. First, Ringnald in seventh, and now Demas in eighth. Both of them perch. training partners trying to climb out of that basement. Nice seats there, And buddy. both turning in tremendous <laughs> routines. Well. Let's take a look once more. <laughs> Dismount here, triple back somersault. You'll notice that he actually has an extra crash pad there. Because this is such a difficult dismount, he's allowed to use that. But he's got to stick it to move into that coveted sixth place. A 9-9 for Trent Demas. What a great score, and that will lift him certainly out of eighth place. But the story up top, with one piece of apparatus left, parallel bars for John Roethlisberger, and horse for Scott Keswick, the man who earlier, as you saw, fell on the high bar and injured himself. Stay with us. It's getting hot and heavy. No place to hide. One event left. Roethlisberger in first place. Lance and Trent have both moved up one position, and Kurt Thomas still in 16th place, trying to stay in there and make the Olympic trials. Keswick in danger of having his second place position usurped by Tim Ryan, who is poised for his vault. Ryan, who says uh, more than anything, he wants to be a stuntman. He spends his time thinking of different ways to do stunts that he's seen in the movies or on television actually thinks up better ways of doing them, he told me. You notice just moments earlier, you see the heavily bandaged left wrist. He's battling for second place, needs a great vault here. Oh, no push off of the horse. Has to pike his body down in a big hop on the landing. That really was not a great vault. By bending his body in the air, he did a less difficult vault, and it shows the right score. there. Yeah, 935, that's not going to do anything to Keswick. 21 year old John Roethlisberger, who won the national championship in 1990. And as we've alluded to all through this championship, had some awful problems last year, not only on the events, but also with his dad, it seemed. Seems like not that long ago. And the two of them were not smiling like they are today. It seemed like one event after another, and this was the scene. He'd come off the gym floor, pounding the tables, stomping so his feet. It's not you. It's just got you. I don't know why. You know, I can't. A fall from the high bar, miscalculated, just inches away, but it might as well be miles. He had come to defend his national title. And for most of the competition, he was left in tears. And so today, here and now, Fred Roethlisberger watches his son and the athlete that he is training, poised to win his second national championship. And you know, parallel bars really isn't one of John's better events. But it is an event where catastrophe usually will not strike. Well, the way this works is if he gets a 9-5 here or better, he makes it mathematically impossible for Scott Keswick to beat him and take the gold medal away from him. And that's really not that tall of an order for a gymnast of his caliber. Last year, though, he played it a little bit conservative in this type of situation. and. Frankly, this routine is not all that jam-packed with difficulty. Oh, and there's an error right there, a mental error. He's a little bit off balance now. His dismount, see if he can recoup. Oh, a little bit off there, Ooh. too. Oh. So here's a question. Does, has he left any room for Scott Keswick? That should do it, John. Well, that is, it is close. I got to tell you that right now, his father and coach is saying, I think it's enough, but he could have opened the door right there. This Olympic Showcase is brought to you by Visa, official card and traveler's check of the 1992 Olympic Games. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. By Carrier, ever since we invented air conditioning, we've been making it better inside. We're the inside guys. By Power Stick Antiperspirant, power that won't let you down. 
and buy M&M's chocolate candies. The milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Waiting along with you to see what the judges have in mind for John Roethlisberger. Will he have a chance for a 9-5, which does in fact make it mathematically impossible for Scott Keswick to take the gold away from him. So he's our national champion. But a 9-5 is not the kind of performance you want to turn in if you're at the Olympics. And right here is certainly something you don't want to do in the Olympics. This skill pressed to a handstand. It's the easiest, most basic element in his entire routine. That is purely a mental error right there. His dismount gets a little bit crooked in the air and a pretty big hop on that landing. His father and coach Fred was a member of the 1968 Olympic team. His sister Marie was a member of the 1984 Olympic team. And now it appears certain that John Roethlisberger will join them at the Olympics. Scott Keswick, after that disaster that hurt him on the high bar, is ready for his last routine the pommel horse and this has characteristically not been a good or let's say a stable event for Scott Keswick his biggest element will come in just one more pass down the horse he'll do a skill called a spindle his body will turn the opposite way that his legs are circling Well, this is probably as good a routine as I've seen Scott do on the pommel horse. And a tremendous comeback after that mishap on the high bar. And then he came to perform well in floor exercise, and now this. But this performance couldn't possibly have been good enough, mathematically impossible, as you see a sigh of relief from John Roethlisberger there. Impossible for him to beat Roethlisberger. And here is what took Scott out of it. Take a close look. Just a slight timing error, and it turns into disaster. John Roethlisberger, the third member of his family, who will be an Olympian if he maintains his stature through the Olympic trials. Yeah, this one's too easy, man. Good job. Next time we'll be in the same group. You heard him say, let me have this one too easy. Roethlisberger and Keswick, one and two at the national championships. But the bigger and more important picture is that these two athletes will likely represent the United States in the Olympics. Roethlisberger, Keswick, Ryan, Lance Ringnald in sixth place. Here's Beth with John on the floor. Congratulations. Another national championship. Yeah. I just saw you breathe a deep sigh. <laughs> there must be a lot in that sigh. What does it mean? It's relief. <laughs> I'm glad it's over, and I'm glad I was su successful. And it takes a little bit of the pressure off for the trials. A lot different scene than last year, John, when we saw you and your father and everything that was happening on the sidelines and a whole lot of negative tension. Yeah. What changed this year? I just stayed focused on what I was doing, and I didn't look around, and I didn't think about what other people were doing or where my place was. I just hit my sets, and I did my job, and everything else fell into place. And did a dynamic between you and your father change also? Um, not really. Well, when you start missing, there gets to be a negative, you know, a negative attitude going between us. But, you know, I started hitting and I kept hitting and we were both up and we were both excited and it just stayed positive. What is it that you learned to do this year that's going to help you now as you head into trials and the Olympics? Uh, well, like I said, I just worried about myself and I didn't worry about anybody else. And I knew if I hit my sets, I'd be fine. And I just got to keep that attitude and keep, keep positive. Okay. Good luck in the trials. Thanks. Look at the rest of the standings, and you see Trent Demas in eighth place there makes the cut to go to the Olympic trials. We'll have to do better than that in the trials. They only take the top six to go to the games. Kurt Thomas in 16th place, so he'll go to the trials as well. He's with Beth right now. Congratulations, Kurt. You're on Thank your way you. to the Olympic trials. Thanks. Thanks. It's been terrific. This was the biggest step for me to make the top 18 in this country. You know, I, I came in with a bunch of different injuries and uh, I've overcome a lot of obstacles, but this was the biggie. And I knew if I got onto the national team, I could then, you know, really give a, a serious uh, concern, concerted effort towards the uh, Olympic trials. The cut here was 18, but it's a lot smaller when you get to trials. Yeah, it's, it's down to top six, so uh, it's, it's pretty intense. You know, I'm, I'm just going to do the best that I can. Uh, you know, it's a long shot, but I feel real good about it. And I'm gonna, I got a lot of work to do in about three weeks, so do the best that I can. Are your routines strong enough, do you feel, for trials? Uh, I have some things that are on the brink of being put into my routines, and I'm going to go for it in the trials. I'm going to put everything in that I've got top difficulty. Uh, I should start at a 10 on every event, and it's just a matter of getting my compulsories where they need to go. And, and you know, anything can happen in trials. 
Congratulations. Thanks Thank you. Lot. Thank you. Anything can happen, and I, for one, am looking forward to traveling to Baltimore the weekend of June 12th for the Olympic Trials in Gymnastics, which you'll see right here on NBC. We've enjoyed bringing you the national championships. For now, I'm John Tesh. We're Beth Ruyak and Tim Daggett saying so long.